After a series of setbacks, mostly stemming from the poor performance of Blue Origin and its rocket engine, United Launch Alliance faces an uphill battle in the development of their newest rocket, the Vulcan Centaur. The constant delays and performance problems have called Blue Origin's capabilities into question and have raised doubts if the company can deliver the engines that it promised. Can Jeff Bezos save his company from utter humiliation, or will he take ULA down in the process? Vulcan is facing a tough time due to engine issues. In what was supposed to be an exciting event, United Launch Alliance's new rocket, Vulcan, was going to have its first engine test fire at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Unfortunately, the test had to be canceled because there was a problem with the ignition system of the booster engine. This test, known as Flight Readiness Firing Test 41, was meant to be the first time the Vulcan Centaur rocket, with its combined first and second stages, would ignite on the launch pad. Even though the rocket was restrained, the six-second firing would have helped test the company's pre-launch procedures, such as propellant loading and timing. It would also generate an impressive one million pounds of thrust. The purpose of this test was to confirm that the integrated system, including the launch vehicle, ground systems, facilities, and software, was ready for actual launches. We want to show that we can start the engine and handle any problems, said Dylan Rice, the launch conductor for ULA's Vulcan, in a press release. However, during the countdown, the team noticed a delay in the booster engine ignition system's response. They need to investigate this further before proceeding with the flight readiness firing. ULA stated that they would roll the rocket back to the vertical integration facility to examine the timing and response of the booster ignition system. Tori Bruno, ULA's president and CEO, provided an update on Twitter expressing the need to understand the issue as it didn't seem right. Soon thereafter, ULA transported the rocket on its mobile launch platform back to the facility. At the time, ULA had not set a new date for the six-second test firing of the first stage's two BE-4 engines. This test is crucial before the inaugural launch of the Vulcan Centaur rocket, which is designed to replace ULA's Atlas and Delta rocket families. The team will continue to analyze the data and determine when the Vulcan can return to the launch pad for the flight readiness firing. Regarding the BE-4 engines, they have already undergone testing at Blue Origin's facilities. However, they have yet to be test-fired while attached to the rocket. What's even more concerning is that, to meet the deadline, Blue Origin seems to have taken the somewhat risky step of delivering the engine to its customer before completing full qualification testing. One of the engines had to be taken out and examined because there were issues with its power output. According to Tori Bruno, the CEO, they made some changes, such as adjusting the ground hydraulic pressure, altering the rate at which liquid oxygen is added, and modifying the flow of purge and chill gas to the engine igniters. This hiccup is not the only problem Vulcan has faced during testing. Vulcan uses a combination of liquid natural gas, LNG, and liquid oxygen, LOX, as propellants. During a tanking test on the launch pad earlier this month, the teams discovered an issue when passing propellants through an igniter in one of the BE-4 engines. To resolve this, they rolled the rocket back to the vertical integration facility and made adjustments to certain parameters for a reliable flight readiness firing. According to Bruno's Twitter update, the teams go through a terminal count, secure the rocket on the launch platform, start the engines without reaching full power, and hold them for a few seconds to perform the test. ULA is probably familiar with such setbacks, as the BE-4 engine was the cause of Vulcan's initial delay. The company introduced the Vulcan rocket in 2015 with plans for its first launch in 2019. In 2018, ULA made a daring decision to purchase engines from Blue Origin, a new player in the space launch market. This move was seen as a risk since Blue Origin's founder, Jeff Bezos, promised an engine called the BE-4 that would be both cost-effective and high-performing, with a power output comparable to the space shuttle's main engine. At the time of the agreement, Blue Origin projected that the BE-4 would be ready for flight by 2017. ULA had plans to launch their first Vulcan rocket in 2020, with the BE-4 engine running on methane fuel. The BE-4 engine is an impressive piece of machinery, one of the most powerful rocket engines produced in the United States in decades, boasting greater thrust than the space shuttle's main engine. Developmental versions of the BE-4 engine performed well in tests conducted on the ground. However, ULA faced a major setback when the engine arrived more than five years behind schedule. During that time, Blue Origin only provided Pathfinder versions of the engines to ULA for fit tests with the Vulcan rocket. But there's no substitute for actual flight engines, 
which are crucial for conducting a static fire test and ensuring the vehicle is ready for launch. It was not until late last year that Blue Origin finally delivered the BE-4 rocket engines for the first ULA Vulcan launch. However, as we know, the results have shown that Vulcan has experienced further delays. So... Why were the engines late in the first place? There seem to be several factors contributing to the delays, some of which can be attributed to Jeff Bezos, the founder of Blue Origin, and his team. There were instances where Bezos was reportedly preoccupied with other ventures, which may have affected progress. Additionally, the COVID-19 pandemic has also played a role in causing delays. One significant issue is the relatively low availability of hardware for the BE-4 engine testing and development program. This means that the factory in Washington has not had enough components to build the developmental engines, leading to extended periods without testing. This was surprising, considering that Blue Origin had claimed to have a hardware-rich development program in the spring of 2017. However, after Bob Smith took over as CEO in late 2017, it seems that the focus shifted more towards reorganizing the leadership of Blue Origin rather than prioritizing hardware development. Other programs also received more attention, resulting in the BE-4 engine not receiving all the necessary resources and freedom to proceed at full speed. Overall, this partnership between ULA and Blue Origin may not have been the best match, but it is hoped that it won't hinder the success of Vulcan. A lot is riding on this rocket, as Vulcan is designed to replace ULA's entire fleet of rockets. When the project started in 2014, ULA's fleet included the Delta IV Heavy and Atlas V rockets. While the Atlas V and Delta IV Heavy are no longer offered for new missions, they are still in service and expected to continue flying for the next few years. Vulcan is bigger, more powerful, and more cost-effective than its predecessors, and it will be launched from the same pad used by the Atlas V. In addition to streamlining operations and reducing costs, the use of Blue Origin engines in Vulcan has important national security implications. Currently, the Atlas V rocket relies on Russian-made RD-180 engines, which has led to pressure from various public and private organizations to transition to engines made in the United States. Vulcan's first mission, called Certification 1, is a test flight aimed at meeting the certification requirements for launching future U.S. Space Force national security missions. Scheduled to be carried on the Vulcan Certification 1 mission are two prototype broadband satellites for Amazon's Project Kuiper. This ambitious project aims to create a constellation of over 3,000 satellites that will provide Internet services to customers worldwide, similar to SpaceX's Starlink. Additionally, a payload destined for the moon will be on board the mission. The payload includes Astrobotics Peregrine Commercial Lunar Lander, based in Pittsburgh. As part of NASA's Commercial Lunar Payload Services, CLPS, initiative, the lander will study the lunar exosphere, regolith, magnetic fields, and radiation, while also testing advanced solar arrays. Furthermore, the lunar lander will carry a secondary payload to the surface of the moon for Celestis Memorial space flights. This unique payload consists of 150 capsules containing ashes, DNA samples, and messages from clients around the world. After facing initial setbacks, ULA made a significant breakthrough by successfully conducting the crucial engine test on June 7, 2023. At Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida, the Vulcan Centaur rocket ignited its two first-stage engines on the launch pad for the very first time. The engines start sequence began just 4.88 seconds before the scheduled launch time. The engines ramped up to the desired level for two seconds before throttling down. The entire flight readiness firing, FRF, lasted for six seconds, marking a significant milestone for ULA's progress. Once operational, the Vulcan Centaur rocket will have the capacity to carry payloads weighing up to 7.7 .7 tons to geostationary orbit which is a high orbit above Earth. While the rocket has yet to make its first official launch, the successful test brings ULA closer to that goal. ULA provided an update, stating that they are over 98% complete with the Vulcan qualification program, with only a few remaining tasks related to the final Centaur V testing. The team is currently analyzing the data obtained from the test and simultaneously investigating any anomalies that occurred during the Centaur V test stand. Once the data review and investigation are completed, ULA will develop a launch plan based on the findings. This successful engine test signifies a significant step forward for ULA's Vulcan Centaur rocket.
bringing them closer to its inaugural launch. While the success of this test is good news, the Vulcan Centaur still seems far from being a reliable operational vehicle. Can ULA turn things around and turn the rocket into a success, or did they make a fatal mistake by partnering with Blue Origin? Only time will tell.